Well, it's a nice day outside, but, uh, wow, that's blown out. There you go. It's a nice day outside, but uh, it's colder in the garage than it is outside right now, and I've still got a little bit of a cold I'm trying to get over here anyway. So I got the old heater going. Um, I've had this idea for a while, and I, I'm not the first one to come up with this idea because they're available commercially, but I'm not paying $500 for one. When I take this thing for a camping trip or an overland trip or something of the sort, I'd like to be able to store stuff in this area. Uh, you don't get a lot of storage back there. You can strap some stuff down, especially now with that a and TV Pro uh, rear tailgate assembly that I've got on there. But I want to be able to take this store, this space here, and make it into storage space. I've seen a couple manufacturers make um, like a little rack system that you remove your seat and then you bolt it right onto your uh, seat rail system here. Uh, you, and then you can put like a Milwaukee pa Milwaukee packout system or you know just strap general stuff inside of here. And that's what I want to do, but I don't want to pay for it. So I've got some scrap angle iron here. My plan is is to make my own little rack system here. You know, it's it's only a temporary thing anyway. Like you're not going to have this in here all the time. So I think I think my idea will work. So we're just gonna I want you guys to come along with my little do-it-yourself or DIY, you know, storage rack system here for the passenger seat of your Maverick X3. So. I'm gonna start just by removing the seat and you want to remove the seat with these bolts here underneath the seat not the ones that are on the back side here and right here which is going to remove this rack this uh, tube system here I don't want to remove that I want to leave that on there because I want to use these rack sliders one and two as my base mounting point for my bolts to go down on my racking system so yeah, we're going to get that done. I'm going to have to also take off that bolt down there just to uh, get this, the uh, seat belt off. If you go with harnesses, it's going to be a little bit easier and or harder depending on your harness setup. But yeah, we're going uh, to try that anyway. So I'm going to get all that stuff off so it's a clean slate and uh, see what we can manufacture with that scrap iron. All right, so I think oh, I'm going to shut this thing off so it doesn't make any more noise. I'm almost sweating in here right now. All right. So, we got the seat off. It's just sitting over there. By the way, there's not much you can do about this. Um, you can try to pry this off of this, but it's pretty flimsy. <laughs> that's a that's really a poor setup for this seat adjuster here, because all it does is just pull on this tab, which just takes it out of the slots that it's supposed to be in to lock the seat in. That's not really uh, safety inspiring. So, to get that off, all I did was cut a small notch out of where that slot is, and you don't have to do that. That's my, This is my machine, so yeah, that's what I did. So, I'm going to make things simple. I'm just going to basically mock out a square here. So, I think I'm going to come right basically to the end here so that I can pack stuff up high. And it's not going to interfere with anything and then come back and then then stop I might put like a storage container or something in here eventually um or a can of gas or whatever or both so anyway that's my plan i also have to be cautious of uh this roller is going to be higher than what this mounting point is so i'm going to have to space the brackets up so i think this piece here is flexible enough that it'll just Bend, up, bend down out of the way, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, so that's what I think I'm going to do. Is I'm just going to take a measurement from like here to basically here. And come straight up and then cut two of those, uh, two of the pieces of angle iron as my base to start off the length. And just measure out what it's going to be um, crosswise. So I'm going to get that done and see what that looks like at least. All right, so you can kind of see my plan here. Uh, I just, I assume, 
that that runner and that runner is somewhat square from factory so i just kind of lined up my um my, my runners this way anyway according to and again obviously i'm gonna have to raise up that so it's not sitting right on the rollers but now i just need to measure here to here and presumably it's supposed to be the same here to here but i'll do it anyway just to make sure and uh cut my cross members and i think i'll probably just end up kind of welding everything together just with a light weld i'll scratch off all that rust and then weld everything up rather than use bolts because i want to use some bolts to uh put the floor in which i haven't quite decided what i'm going to do yet i think it's just going to be wood because <laughs> i have i think i got enough wood to just do that with if i had some mesh or something like that some expanded metal i'd use that but I'm trying to do things on the uh on the cheap here since this is kind of a temporary temporary thing that anybody should be able to build at home. So, yeah, let's go with that. I'll get those measurements done, done and cut up. Check the fitment on that before we go any further. Nope, I'm not showing you guys my welds. I farm weld. Which means it'll hold, but don't look at my welds. That's not too bad looking. A little bit of clean up and some paint will look a lot better but you can get the concept of what i'm doing here now uh i gotta mark out those bolt holes i'm gonna re be reusing the factory bolts that i took the seat out with which are i think a 10 mil but i'm just gonna like i say just pretty much reuse what i can Now, since I got to space it out from here, I got M12 nuts that I had lying around. Something that the bolt will go straight through without having to screw into or, you know, thread into. So, it looks like it's going to work. There. That actually seems pretty solid. Man, I think that's going to work out all right. I think that's going to work out all right. That's pretty solid. And I think if I take off my electrical tape here, I don't know if you can see that in there, but that seat adjuster, that's fine right where it's at. It's not going to bother anything. And I think you can actually pull it and adjust it. <laughs> right on. That works. Cool. So now, I think, design-wise, what I'm going to end up doing is, uh, yeah, I'm going to clean up, clean up the, uh, from the crappy welds. I'm going to take it back off. I'm going to need to drill some spots along here for some bungee cords or some straps. So that's my next step is I'm going to be drilling a bunch of holes. I think maybe four on this side, four on this side, and two here, and two here. So that you can cross strap or whatever you got to do. And then after that, um, clean up the rust and she'll go for some paint. But uh, yeah, let's get this, get the holes drilled. Unbolt this again, get the holes drilled. good do-it-yourselfer i am using whatever the heck i have available to me which happens to be some old stain 
that I stained the chicken coop with. And I put a coat of uh, rust, actually two coats of rust paint on this so it's nice and thick. Hide my horrible, horrible weld. So this might look a little weird <laughs> inside the X3, but whatever. We'll work with what we got. Anyway, I'm just going to slather this on. And these notches here, I just basically did because I forgot the, <laughs> forgot the thickness of the board, uh, you know, from here to here. I can't really get bungee cord hooks through those holes that I drilled really cleanly, I guess really good. So anyway, I just notched those out. So whatever. Eh. Only a temporary solution. But, like I said, it will work. Will work. <laughs> I mean, that actually doesn't look too bad. I, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. You can still slide it to accommodate, I guess. I mean, you could even put stuff in front of it in the floor. See how it looks with stuff in there. I mean, for a quick test, yeah, it's going to work fine. I mean, it's not interfering with the glove box or anything. I still get in there, access that from the driver's seat. Yeah, I just got the bungee straps just kind of loose in there right now. But, I mean, I've got small ratchet straps that I can secure that right down to that plate with. Um, and then use the uh, bungee cords just for the looser stuff on top. I mean, yeah, that's... <laughs> That's going to work all right, I think. That way I can carry some stuff in here. Strap a couple things in the back side. Yeah, I'm happy with it. Um, I'm going to have to do a shakedown run on it anyway. Like just actually phys physically strap everything down one day and go out just to make sure that everything's not going to rattle itself to pieces. But I can't see why it wouldn't. So there you go. There's a good little do-it-yourself project. <laughs> cost me a whole lot of nothing except for some time a little bit of paint not the prettiest looking thing but hey again i wasn't spending 500 bucks for a little plate that you bolt on your seat frame anyway i hope you enjoyed that video it's something to try <laughs> if anything well hey we'll go back to the old red green saying if the women don't find you handsome they should at least find you handy you be, you be the judge of that. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for uh, joining me on this video. Hope uh, hope it helps somebody. So you can see, you can use for all different kinds of things, not just uh, camping gear. Um, I can run some feed back and forth to my farm now. So there you go. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Rye guy out. We'll see you guys out in the trail.